I'm kind of cynical and suspicious anyway of the difference between what people say they do, the mm. theories they say they use, <laughs> what they versus what they do when nobody's watching. And yeah. I think that people are far more eclectic, far more pragmatic, mm -hmm. far more flexible than they'd ever lead others to believe. <clears throat> Maybe it would help me if, if you could talk about maybe the, the journey that you took to get mm. to this place. I mean, maybe the theoretical uh, approaches that you went through. Well, for me, a lot of it started in my theories class, that um, yeah, I'm very impressionable, um, very open-minded. And every week, you know, theories this in those enough. days is its theory, you know, flavor of the, of the week. And yeah. each week I'd become so impressed. You know, mm -hmm. I, you know, the first week of the semester, I'm a psychoanalyst. That's what I got to do. And then mm -hmm. I'm an existentialist. And then I'm a cognitive therapist. And I loved them all. Like the and medical I, student's disease. You yeah. know, whatever the disease was they talked <laughs> about, was, you caught. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it seemed to me that there's something funny going on here. It just... How is it possible that someone like Carl Rogers could help somebody the way he did mm -hmm. when Fritz Perls could do something so completely different and also be useful, and Albert Ellis could do something that's so amazingly different than those two and that he could be helpful, and that Adler could be helpful, and that Glasser could be helpful, and they all seem to be doing different things. And it occurred to me even then something weird is going on. It seems to me that if you lock somebody up in a room, with somebody that has certain qualities and who does certain things, that person's going to come out different. And that it really doesn't even matter what you do as long as you follow certain guidelines and as long as that there are certain variables that are present. So I've been real interested in the last 20 years researching what is the essence of good therapy, regardless of how it's done and what people call themselves. And what I've discovered is that basically good therapists all do the same things. Okay, well, we're just about ready to watch you work with Harriet. Mm -hmm. uh, can you set that up for us a little bit, uh, what our viewers might look at in terms of how you worked integratively with her? Yeah. There's a lot of pressure in one session to kind of show your stuff and to make sure that... Were you feeling pressure? Uh, more than a little bit. And um, So we should look for... Okay, we'll yeah, look, for, look for my... See if my, you sweat. Yeah. Your anxiety. Yeah. Uh, I'm really cautious and careful that even if I don't help anyone, I don't want to hurt them. And I was aware that Harriet was already seeing another counselor. So it was very important to um, kind of look at the context of what she's doing. Mm -hmm. And I think it'd be interesting for students to, to observe that as a way of beginning. And then to just um, tune in on the variety of, of things that I tried to use and the variety of methods that I tried to demonstrate. I, mm -hmm. I think it'd be an amusing way to start this video if you showed the video first and had students guess what approach I was using. Mm -hmm. And I, I bet we would have gotten a half a dozen or a dozen sure. different answers. Mm -hmm. and I, I'm quite proud of that, mm -hmm. of not being able to be typed. Um, when I read reviews of my books, I'm always amused that the reviewers say, uh, label me as being an existentialist or a humanist or a psychoanalytic practitioner or a cognitive therapist. Like, nobody knows where to put me. And I'm, I'm quite proud of that, actually, that I don't fit anywhere. So I look for you to be respectful, very positive, and look at the way that you use yourself to help Harriet change. And look, especially look at the relationship. Good. Okay, let's watch. Mm.